let me also go across now to somebody who has a few things to say about why the Congress simply cannot get its act together in the rest of the country and more specifically in Tripura in the Northeast. Pradyut Dev Barma, thank you very much for speaking to me. First time contesting in assembly elections in Tripura and yet you have become the second largest party. You've got almost a 20% vote share. Why has that happened? I think uh, this is the blessings of the people of Tripura and uh, we worked very hard for it. And uh, I'm uh, uh, quite surprised that uh, so many people turned up in such large numbers and voted for us. Because to be also the youngest party, we're just two years old, to, uh, and this is our first elections that we are fighting, uh, first assembly election that we are fighting, to be ahead of the Congress and the CPM, which have ruled the state for decades, is uh, a sign that we have really worked hard and the people have bestowed their trust on us. But who do you think you've dented the most, according to you? At whose cost has this performance been? The left, the Congress or the IPFT? I think uh, IPFT had won eight seats last time. They won just one. So we have uh, definitely won those seven seats. Uh, there were another, uh, there was a seat of the Deputy Chief Minister, which is BJP, which we have won. Uh, we, have, uh, we have not been able to defeat the communists. We have actually dented the IPFT, the BJP, and in certain areas we have dented the, uh, the Congress because uh, uh, there were certain seats where the Congress had a certain amount of uh, uh, sway and we have defeated them as well. So would you say now legitimately you can stake claim to being the party that is the voice of the tribals, that you've got the entire tribal vote behind you? Padmaja, the Hindus, uh, the tribals of Tripura are also largely Hindus, almost 85% of them. I myself am a Hindu, so I do believe that I speak for the Hindus and not against our, my religion. And the second thing is that, of course, uh, we are uh, the voice of the indigenous people in the ADC areas. We have won the district council election, and now out of 20 seats, we have won uh, 13. And one has been won by IPFT, whose demand is also very similar to ours. So b basically, 14 out of the 20 uh, tribal seats have been won by regional parties. So obviously, there is something which needs to be heard and addressed by the government of India and the state government. But what about the Congress? Has it not managed to feel the pulse of people of the Northeast? At one point, they were completely unchallenged. Now they have lost some of their best talent, and talent which, by the way, succeeds outside. From you in Tripura, to Himanta in Assam, to Mukul Sangma in Meghalaya, it seems that people who leave the Congress actually end up doing much better, sometimes much better than the Congress itself. I think uh, uh, this is largely, you know, even I was a congressman for 17, 18 years and uh, I was literally uh, pushed out of the Congress party. Uh, and uh, I think this is the problem because the Congress party's uh, leadership, uh, at least the AICC leaders who are appointed for Northeast, do not actually come and understand the region very well. I am saying this during my time. And uh, what happened was that I saw an erosion of the regional leaders who spoke out strongly for the local politics because the narrative for far too long was Delhi's voice over our voice. And that's where I think the Congress has largely suffered. Okay, but would it have helped if Rahul Gandhi and Bharat Jodo Yatra would have traveled to the northeast instead of doing south to north, they could have instead done east to west? No, I think Bharat Jodo Yatra is uh, more to do with uh, Rahul Gandhi's uh, image rather than the party's organization. So even if the uh, Bharat Jodo Yatra took place from, uh, let's say, Pasighat to uh, Porbandar, which they are planning now, I think it will only improve Rahul Gandhi's image as an individual. It will not help the party structure. But did the Congress ever reach out to you, you know, in the midst of their campaign or before that? What if now they come back and say, listen, we want to look at a revival in the Northeast, come back? The, the, the Congress uh, did try to reach out to me, I'm sure they, I mean, they did, but then I did say that why don't you speak on these core issues which uh, are, are constitutional solutions? And then uh, there was no, uh, nothing. I heard nothing from the Congress party after that and which was uh, disappointing to say the least because we were the only party in the Northeast which was neither aligned with the Congress or with the BJP, yet the Congress uh, were not very prompt in their uh, uh, outreach to us. But 
What about the BJP? Would you be willing to do business with them? There is news that you've been speaking to Amit Shah. Would you do business with them again? I don't do business with anyone rather uh, because I think politics should be a service and not business. I have other businesses which I can do but not in politics. But yes, if the BJP is willing to talk about our constitutional solutions, uh, to talk about the upliftment of the tribals, to talk about our autonomous areas and to give us uh, solutions so we can safeguard our future in the onslaught of uh, the people who are living in Bangladesh uh, coming over to our area, then we will be more than happy to uh, listen to them and to talk to them. In conclusion, what would you say about the BJP's performance in the Northeast, given that they have fought pretty much on the image of the Prime Minister and the slogan that he has given of cultures being respected, but also side by side there being development and infrastructure? I think, I th I think I think Modi, I, th I, th I think Modi's visit uh, in Tripura definitely helped uh, BJP gain some traction, especially in the general areas. Uh, I do believe that his rally in uh, Shillong, uh, which was uh, after the Tripura election, was uh, uh, one of the main reasons why BJP also had a surge in their vote share. And in Nagaland, uh, again, I think uh, they fought as a junior partner. But uh, uh, they uh, did have uh, Mr. Modi everywhere. So uh, I've never met the Prime Minister, but from whatever I've heard, uh, what he speaks about the Northeast, it would be uh, very nice of him to invite all uh, stakeholders from Northeast, those who may not subscribe to every point of view that he says, uh, to meet him so that we can also articulate our point of view. Uh, the narrative in this uh, country has become us versus them. It is not necessarily us versus them. It is about us wanting to actually articulate what we want the government of India to hear. Well, already the Prime and Minister I hope is... Mr. Modi, the Prime Minister of India, as the Prime Minister of India and not a leader of a political party, will invite us. Well, the Prime Minister today anyway said that Dil Ki Duri and Dilli Ki Duri should be reduced. Uh, hopefully, this outreach of yours should be and may be reciprocated. Uh, Pradyut Dev Burma, thank you very much for speaking to us and congratulations. Quite a spectacular performance by your party in its first outing in the assembly elections. This, of course, is just the beginning of the election cycle. 2024 is but a few months away. One year will pass by like this. Thanks very much for watching.